Hello and thanks for streaming this episode from ACF Church. Our hope is that this word would encourage you to walk closer with God and with your local church. We hope you consider partnering in the work God's doing here by joining a life group, serving, and giving. If you'd like to give financially to the mission of ACF Church, you can do so safely on our website at acfak.org or by texting the amount to 907-341-4213. Now prepare your hearts to hear God's word. stunt driver you just got your license back we almost died we almost died twice i was totally out of control hey, welcome we're so glad that you guys are here with us this morning um, we are in the middle of a series called out of control and we're talking about how we all do this right we, we work so hard to make everything just look awesome on the outside and on the inside, we are totally out of control. Uh, we're not even quite sure how we're going to make it through to the end of the week. Um, but yet, the exterior's got to remain looking good. And so we want to tear down those walls. We're also following uh, a book, or we're using a lot of principles, I should say, from a book called Boundaries, an excellent book. We're selling it in the lobby if you want to pick it up after service. Uh, they're almost sold, sold out, so if you haven't picked up a copy yet, I would highly suggest to pick it up. Uh, before we go any further, I want to let you know that today's message is very PG-13. Um, and so if you have a kid in the room with you, we're going to ask that you would, in just a moment, I'm going to pray. And while I'm praying, we're going to ask that you would take your kids down to our kids area downstairs. There's some amazing volunteers down there that are ready to help check them in. Um, and they're going to have an incredible time uh, down there in our ACF kids program. Uh, so let's go ahead and pray. Jesus, we thank you for today. God, I thank you for the opportunity to talk about difficult topics. I thank you for the opportunity, God, to uh, tackle uh, real issues that are hurting us um, in our lives. And that today, Jesus, I pray that we can take a step towards freedom. Thank you, Jesus, that yours is the victory, that through the cross, through your resurrection, you have claimed all victory over sin. God, I pray that we could discover that this morning. It's in your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. So we are in a series called Out of Control, and one thing that's really cool that I love that we do is we're actually adjusting our messages, like we've been hearing from you, and, and because you guys have been emailing us, talking to us, we've looked through these flags over here, and these flags, if you didn't know, uh, a couple weeks ago we said, these are areas I need to make healthy boundaries over in 2019. And overwhelmingly, the number one issue, the number one area was boundaries over our sexual desires. And that this is a major struggle in our lives, specifically when it comes to the area of pornography, when it comes to the area of lust, and, and, and all of these things. And so that's what we're talking about today, is we're walking through healthy boundaries. We're going to talk about healthy boundaries over our sexual desires. Now before I jump into this, and we're, it's going to be a marathon, we're going to go. We're going to go quick, so keep up. But before I jump into this, I need to let you know that uh, this is an important thing for us to understand, is that sexual desires are not evil. Sexual desires are not sin. In fact, our sexual desires come from God. They are a gift from him for us for a variety of many different reasons. Biblically, we see why God gave us sex and sexual desires. I don't have any time to talk about that today of why, but I will say this, that I did preach a message about a year ago in a series called High Voltage, and the this, this sermon's called Negative, and so if you want to go back and watch it online, uh, download our app, watch it on our app, uh, you can hear the sermon of why I talked about God gave us sex and sexual desires, and if you're a parent in this room, you need to know this, because you need to be teaching it to your kids. We have to stop teaching our kids like so many of us were taught. My generation, we were taught in church, sex is bad, sex is bad, sex is bad. Okay, now it's good, right? Like, it's evil, it's evil, it's evil, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. Okay, now you can do it. 
right? Now you're married. And, and, and that has really distorted this understanding of what sex is for so many people. And it, it really is a problem a lot, among a lot of married couples in this. So we don't ever want to call a gift from God evil or bad. It is absolutely within the boundaries of what God created it. It is an incredible gift to us. But see, the issue is the problem is Satan, he hates sex. He hates it. He doesn't love it. He hates it. Because it's a gift to us from God. And it represents so much. And so what he's done is he's twisted it. He's distorted it. He's mutilated it. He's poisoned it. And now he's trying to feed it back to us. And we are eating it up. We are eating it up. But the thing is, we know this, but we really don't want to address it. As the church, as people, as individuals, we really don't want to talk about this. We don't want to address this issue, this area of boundaries around our sexual desires. And I think there's two real main reasons why we don't want to talk about it. <clears throat> the first one is this. I think one of the main reasons we don't want to talk about it is because we don't think it's that big of a deal. It's not that big of a deal. Porn, sleeping around, all these things. Like, you know, just, it's, it's, it's 2019, Josh. It's 2019. We've evolved from needing to keep sex between a husband and wife. Like, we've evolved to, like, porn's not that big of a deal. Like, we just don't think it's a big deal. And maybe that's you today. The other reason we struggle to talk about it, too, is because we just don't know what to do. We don't know what to do, so we, we don't address it. We don't address it, but here's the truth that you need to understand. Every area of our lives that we leave unaddressed will be filled with evil. Every area in our lives that we leave unaddressed will be filled with evil. We are not people that tend towards holiness, right? Left to our own vices, we don't tend towards righteousness. We don't tend towards holiness we tend towards evil. And when we allow our heads to be stuck in the sand in certain areas or just don't want to talk about it, it's not going to be filled with righteousness. But we, we found that we just don't want to talk about these things, right? I don't know what to do, Josh. I tried to get like this under control, right? But I feel out of control with boundaries around sexual desires, and so I don't know what to do. And so what, what, what do I do? I don't know. I, I, I say things like this. Like, this will be the last time. Maybe you've said that before. I've said this in my life. This is going to be the last time. This is going to be the last time I look at pornography. Okay, now this is going to be the last time I look at pornography. No, no, this is going to be the last time. And, and you've been saying, there's people in this room that have been saying, this will be the last time since the fifth grade. You've been saying, this will be the last time since the fifth grade. You don't know what to do. Your answer is, I hope it goes away. I, I pray, and, and, and I hope God just takes this thing away. God, take away my sexual desire, right? Like, make me asexual. Like, I don't want to desire this anymore, and I hope it just goes away, and we've been hoping it will go away for 10, 15, 20 years. And it's not, and it hasn't, because we won't address it. And this morning, we're going to talk about this. We're going to tackle this. My question, I just want to start off as, as we get into this, I want to start off this question. Do you believe that you can really have freedom when it comes to the area of sexual desires in your life? Do you actually believe you can have freedom over pornography? I do. We do at ACF Church. We believe that God can set you free, but it's going to take work. See, one of the values at ACF Church is this. It is that life is a mission, not a vacation. Maybe you've heard us say that before. Uh, maybe you've seen it written down. We have it all over the place. Life is a mission, not a vacation. If we're going to have victory over our sexual desires by putting boundaries around them, we got to know that life is a mission, not a vacation. What does that mean? Well, I'm very excited. Last week, I booked uh, a vacation for me and my family to go to Hawaii. Uh, it's the first time we've ever gone. Uh, so we're really excited. My wife has been asking me for 15 years to take her, and for 15 years I've had zero desire to go to Hawaii. But I gave in, so we're going. Uh, it just worked out great for us to be able to go, and so in like 62 days, I'm going in vacation mode. I don't know if you've ever been on vacation mode before, but this is what vacation mode looks like. When I get to Hawaii, I'm expecting a few things. First of all, it's going to be ease, a life of ease, right? I'm going to sit on the beach. I'm going to have my coconut in a straw. I'm not going to drink it because coconut milk is disgusting, but I'm going to sit there for the pictures and look awesome with my coconut and my straw, right? It's going to just be easy sitting on the beach. What else does vacation mode look like? 
Vacation mode looks like no responsibilities. When I'm in Hawaii, I'm going to have as little responsibilities as possible. Now, I am bringing my kids, but I planned ahead, so I'm also bringing my mom. All right, grandma, <laughs> grandma loves responsibility with the grandkids. And so I can, hey, mom, take the kids. I got this much responsibility coming my way when I'm in Hawaii. It's the life of no responsibility. What else does vacation mode look like? It looks like everything goes my way, right? I'm expecting 85. I'm expecting blue skies. I'm expecting it to be amazing. And if it's not, there's going to be issues, right? I'm going to have a problem. Uh, what else does vacation life look like? I'm going to do what I want to do. I'm going to wake up in the morning, and I'm going to do what I want to do. As long as Malia says it's okay, I'm going to do <laughs> what I want to do. That's what vacation life looks like. And, and for so many of us, most of us, Maybe all of us, we live lives of, I want to be on vacation. I want my life to be easy. I want to do what I want to do. I want as little responsibility as possible. But what does it look like when you are on mission? When you are on a mission, when you are assigned a mission, what does that life look like? See, that life looks like you know there's going to be hard work ahead. There, when you're on mission, you know there's going to be hard work. You know it's going to take grit to succeed at your mission. You know it's going to take perseverance, that things are not going to go your way, and that really doesn't matter. You're going to have to push through it. You're going to have to keep moving forward. You're going to have to keep advancing. What does it look like to be on mission? How do you succeed at mission? You succeed at mission through team. It takes a team to succeed at a mission, not an individual. The Navy SEALs have a saying that says two is one and one is none. If you're on your own, you are none. That you, it takes a team to succeed when you are on mission, there's an end goal. You know why you're on mission. You know what's going on. And because there's an end goal, you know what you're about. And when you can know what you're about, it, it makes it just that much easier to persevere. It makes it that much easier to do the hard work because you know what the end goal is and you know why you're on mission and you know what you are about. That is life on mission. And so if we're going to have success in putting boundaries around our sexual, our, our sexual desires, if we're going to have success in putting boundaries around things like pornography, we have to be life on mission. Paul says it like this in 1 Thessalonians. This is what it means to be living a life on mission. Finally then, brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us how you ought to walk and please God just as you were doing that you do it so more and more for you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus for this is the will of God your sanctification that as you that you abstain from sexual immorality that each of you know how to control your own body in holiness and honor, not in the passions of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God. This is our mission. If you have said yes to Jesus, your mission is this, sanctification. What is that word? It's a very big churchy word. Sanctification is simply this, that every day I am working, I am striving to make my life look more like Jesus' life. Sanctification is not perfection. We will not reach perfection this side of eternity, but that we are going to strive. Sanctification is not the destination. It's the journey along the way of looking like Jesus. And Paul says this, this is the will of God for your life. If you woke up this morning, came to church, man, what is God will for me in my life? Good news. You wonder what God's will is? That you abstain from sexual immorality. God's will is that your sanctification, how that you abstain from sexual immorality, how does that work? Because you would learn how to control your own body. If you could abstain from sexual immorality and you can control your body, you can work at putting boundaries around so many other areas in your life. The dominoes will begin to fall. It doesn't mean everything's easy and it doesn't mean perfection either, but that we learn to set up boundaries. You see, you might be going, maybe you're raised in church and you're going, wait, Josh, no, no, no. Matthew 28, 19, our mission is go into all the world and preach the gospel and, you know, make disciples. That's our mission, right? Yes, yes it is. But this is how we get there. You see, a life that it has no boundaries around it, a life that is not on mission for sanctification, an unsanctified life is a life that is impotent when it comes to creating disciples. A life that does not have boundaries 
around our sexual desires, that gives in to, se to sexual temptation, that life is impotent when it comes to making disciples. Now hear me out, please hear me out. I'm not saying that you have mastered this and that you are living this perfect life. That is not the life. If you are working and you're like, Josh, but I, I struggle, I pray, I'm, I'm fighting, I'm scratching to keep these boundaries, I struggle, sometimes I fail, but I'm coming back to God. Are you saying that I can't be making disciples? No, not at all. I'm saying that's the fight of sanctification. Okay, I'm not, it, perfection is not the answer. It is not the goal, but this life of sanctification so that we can be making disciples so what does a life look like with healthy sexual boundaries? And what does a life look like that is unbound, no boundaries? I want to talk about this. So I want to talk about this issue of pornography this morning, because this is the leading issue. This is the, one of the leading problems. And there's so many people are struggling with this. See, the odds are, statistically speaking, that 85% of men are looking at pornography, whether it's once a day, once a week, once a month, even if it's once every six months, that is too much. Odds are that 85% of men, I, I believe the statistics are true in this room, 85% of the men are looking at pornography. And the odds for women are, are, are flying through the roof, that now they say one out of three women are looking at pornography as well. It is no longer just a male issue. It is an us issue, and it is a family issue. It is a body of Christ issue. It is a society issue. Even if you're not a Christian in this room today, it is an issue. So I want to talk about it for just a minute. Here's a few statistics about pornography. The first one is this. Uh, every second, 20, an average of 28,000 people are looking at pornography. Every second of every day, an average of 28,000 people are looking at pornography. Uh, every day, 68 million searches are for uh, pornographic images. Every day, 68 million searches. To put that in perspective, uh, that's 25% of all searches. Google, you know, Bing, like all these other things, Yahoo. 25% every day, a quarter of all searches every day are for pornographic images. Porn affects your brain in major ways. Now, I want, I want to talk about some uh, medical issues, some real things that have been studied that we're finding out now, now after like a decade and a half of internet porn, what they're finding. First of all is this, that it, it completely affects your brain. It, 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 man, it messes it up. Every brain, every person has something they call like the pleasure center in your brain. And that pleasure center tells you like, man, that food was really good. I enjoyed that. Wow, this walk was amazing. I enjoyed the sunset. Wow, sex with my spouse was incredible. Pleasure center tells you what you enjoy. And what happens with pornography is that it absolutely destroys that. And I do not have time to get into how, but if you'd like to sit down, I'd love to have that conversation. But basically what happens is your brain says, yes, I love this, this porn, but then your brain releases a different chemical that goes, whoa, that's too much, and it, it hammers it down, but that chemical that it releases to hammer it down, like, that doesn't go away. So what ends up happening is, like, I can look at this image right here, and it gets me really excited. But now this doesn't work anymore, so i got to move to this. Now this doesn't work anymore because it's hammering it down, hammering it down. Now i got to look at this. And what ends up happening is the, the pornography becomes more violent, more vile. And you have men, you have people that walk into some pretty disgusting, horrific things, and they never intended to get there. They never woke up and said, hey, I want to look at child porn. But what ends up happening is what they've looked at before doesn't work anymore, and they find themselves one step at a time down this road. It absolutely messes with your brain. Another thing that it does is we read, this is amazing, I love this, we read in scripture, one of the things, the, the purpose of sex is, is to bond you with your spouse. It is to bond you together, that it bonds our minds and it bonds our souls together. Well, what they're finding out now, what they're realizing is that sex will bond you to whatever you're having sex with. And so when you look at porn on your phone, you are having sex with your phone. And so what ends up happening is your brain is becoming bonded with your phone so that you can no longer have sex with your spouse or you can no longer have sex with a person, that all of a sudden, it, human interaction doesn't turn me on anymore. I'm so bonded to my cell phone that I got to have pornography on in the bedroom to actually be able to have sex in real life because I've been bonded to my phone. It's, it's, this is an epidemic among men. Porn damages. There was a, a study done uh, at the human development, research of human development in Berlin, Germany. 
And I was reading the article on this, and they were saying how they took uh, a whole bunch of men, and they kind of put them into different categories and said, okay, you guys look at porn as much as you want. You guys look at it once a day, once a week, once a month, once every six months. And, and it was across the board the same to the amount of times that they were looking at porn was to the amount of gray matter that was being killed in their brains. That pornography was literally killing the gray matter in your brain. And, and, and so what is gray matter? What does that mean? Man, gray matter does a ton of different stuff, but one of the things it does is it controls your sensory. And so you might know someone or maybe yourself that's addicted to porn and they're like, man, food just doesn't taste the way it used to. Like, beauty, you know, nature just doesn't pop the way it once did. Yeah, because you're literally killing the gray matter in your brain by looking at pornography. It is becoming an epidemic. Studies have found that the frequency of porn use is directly correlated with depression, anxiety, social stress, and social problems. In other words, pornography is creating other mental illnesses. These are case studies. It wasn't that, like, I had stress, so I looked at pornography. No, it was I looked at pornography, now I have stress. Pornography is literally creating men, other mental illnesses in, in, in the people that are looking at it. Uh, pornography hurts relationships. After being exposed to pornography, men reported being less satisfied with their partner's physical appearance, sexual performance, and levels of affection, um, and express a greater desire for sex without emotional involvement. In other words, the very thing, another very reason God gave us sex was emotional connectiveness, and porn goes, makes you go, no, I don't want that. The very opposite of what God created it to be. And another thing that porn does is it makes us addicted to something else. It makes us addicted to variety. And so whether you're having sex with multiple partners physically or you're having sex with multiple partners through your phone, you're, getting created, you're, you're becoming addicted to variety. I can just keep swiping and swiping and find the type of guy, the type of girl that I want to have sex with today on my phone. And then all of a sudden you have these marriages that are like, man, we used to connect and, uh, you know, romantically, sexually, and we just kind of don't connect anymore. I guess we're just kind of falling out of love. No, you're just addicted to variety. You want to try something else. That's se sex with a husband and wife is supposed to do the very opposite. It bonds you together, so you don't want more variety. But when we look at porn, it, addicts, it makes us addicted to our options that are out there. Sex also damages, or I'm sorry, it's not sex, uh, porn also damages uh, marriages in this way. Porn is completely selfish. It's all about me. It's, it's fulfilling my d complete desires. It's all about me. When marriage is the exact opposite of that, right? Marriage is about love. It's about sacrifice. It's what we read in scripture. Love and sacrificing for each other. And pornography says, no, I just want what I want, when I want, how I want. It is the very opposite of what God created it to be. And the last thing, I, I, I can't talk about porn without talking about this, is that pornography is to the sex trade industry what cigarettes are to cancer. Okay, if you people who regularly look at porn, looking at porn contributes propels, moves forward the sex trade industry. The sex trade industry around the world, the sex trade industry in the United States, the sex trade industry in Anchorage. Looking at porn funds it. It moves it. There's no way around it. And I've heard all these excuses before. No, 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 Josh, I don't pay for porn. I look at free porn. That doesn't help. People pay thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars to have ads pop up on porn, free porn, right? And so it, they're still getting paid. They're still propelling it forward. No, Josh, I, I, I've heard this. I, I don't look at like that kind of porn, like that, you know, dark web stuff. It's, it's mainstream stuff, you know, the regulated stuff. Here's the problem. You know, the stuff I look at, it's, it's all consensual. It's a, they, they, if they're choosing to be on camera and they're enjoying it and they're getting paid, then what's the problem? Here's the problem. What does consent even mean? What does it even mean? It's completely ambiguous. I read an article about a girl who was kidnapped, in, I believe it was in Florida, and she was tortured. They electrocuted her until she gave consent to be on, in, in porn movies and, and have pictures taken of her. So she, she finally gives the consent after torture. They, they take these pictures of her, and they, they uh, sell them all over the country, to, or all over the world, I guess, uh, to all these different sites, and one of the pictures ended up on the number two porn magazine in the world, Hustler. Hustler magazine bought one of those pictures because they had, she gave her consent and she was on the front cover. 
She didn't give consent. Looking at pornography propels the sex trade industry. We have to understand that. So what do we do? This is, uh, this is not a beat you up, beat us up session. This is bring us hope. But what do we do? How do we actually make the last time the last time? When I said, okay, this is going to be it. This is going to be the last time. How do I make that true? How do I make the last time the last time? I've tried. I've failed. It can't be done, Josh. I love this quote. Uh, Pastor John Piper says this. If the stakes are high enough, you will have all the self-control you need to resist any sexual temptation. If the stakes are high enough. You see, the stakes aren't high enough. John Piper goes on and explains it like this. He says, look, uh, let's say that you are at the height of sexual desire and you, you, it's the worst it's ever been in your life and you just feel like you have to look at porn. And so you grab your cell phone, but exactly the same time you grab your cell phone, your front door gets kicked in and it's a masked man and he's got your wife and he's got a knife around her neck and he says, if you look at porn, I'm going to slit her throat. You're going to find all the self-control you need to not look at porn. If you go to the other end of the spectrum, let's say same scenario, you're at the height of like sexual desire and you're like, I got to look at this porn. And so you grab your cell phone out and then I come walking in, awkward, I know, but I come walking in <laughs> and I have a duffel bag of a million dollars, tax free, and I drop it on the ground and I say, if you don't look at porn, million dollars is yours. I guarantee you, you'll find all the self-control you need to put that phone back in your pocket and go, I'll take that over this. Right? The, the self-control is within us, but the question is, what do you desire? What do you desire? Are the stakes high enough for you? I don't know if you've ever heard of this man before. His name is uh, Ravi Zacharias. Uh, he's an apologetic speaker. He's a brilliant man. He's from India. Um, he, he's got a brother-in-law who, who does much of the same as him, an apo apologetic teacher and preacher. Uh, his name is Suntar. And, and Suntar tells this story, and he says it like this, that he was one day sitting on a park bench. And as he's sitting there, he notices off in the distance a woman out for a jog. And she's jogging towards him. And he, he notices she's beautiful. There's nothing wrong with noticing that a woman is beautiful or that a man is handsome. But he notices that she's beautiful and that she's wearing a sports bra and some very tight pants. And he's thinking in his mind, all right, this is a good part of my day right here. She's going to come jogging right on by, and I just, I'm just going to enjoy what goes right in front of me. And at that very moment, he's struck with conviction. And there's a battle inside of him, and he doesn't feel he can resist this battle. He feels like he just wants to lust and watch this woman and indulge in his lust as she runs by. And this is his prayer that he prayed, he says. He says, God, may you show yourself to me in this very moment to be more beautiful than the quick, gregarious look at this woman as she runs by. God, may you show yourself to be more beautiful to me in this very moment. Did you know that Jesus can be more beautiful than pornography? Jesus can be more beautiful to you than pornography. And here's the cure. The cure is self-control. The cure is boundaries in our lives. And you might go, Josh, I've tried self-control. I've tried boundaries. It didn't work. Well, I'll say to you then this, the stakes aren't high enough for you right now. The stakes aren't high enough because we all have within us the ability to resist, right? It's not a full addiction. In other words, you're not going to die if you don't look at pornography. No one has ever gone to the doctor. There's no recorded instance where someone was found dead and the coroner's like, should have had some sex, would have made it, right? Would have lived. No, we all have within us the ability of self-control. But here's the deal. It's not self-control that just is contrived within us from gritting our teeth. It's not that kind of self-control. It's not self-control that just goes, okay, I'm just gonna, no. Right? It's this kind of self-control. Paul writes to the Galatians in chapter five. He says this, but I say, walk by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of your flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the spirit, and the desires of the spirit are against the flesh. For these are opposed to each other, to keep you from doing the things that you want to do. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. 
Now the works of the flesh are evident, sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you as I've warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self control against such things there is no law and those who belong to Christ have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires it is self control through the holy spirit that we learn how to walk in step with the holy spirit and again i'm not talking perfection here please we can't leave here thinking i got to land on perfection but every day i'm i'm learning to to walk more with the holy spirit this idea of sanctification when that happens i might be an angry person and tomorrow i might be just a little less angry and the next day i might be a little less angry and it's a progression in that and self control that we can find self control through the power of the holy spirit so i want to talk some real practical steps for you this morning let's talk some real practical steps I didn't make these up. I heard someone else talking about this. Pastor Jonathan Pacluda uh, talked about this in a message once. It was really awesome. And so I want to help us walk through this. He says, for your dead soul, right, in this area of your life, you need CPR, CPR. So it's CPR, not thrice, twice. CPR, CPR, if you want to write this down. These are areas in where we find victory in putting boundaries around our sexual desires. The first one is this confess confess and not just confess like yeah i i i have a problem with lust sometimes right being ambiguous not calling out what things truly are going on in our life but actually confess every single time every single time you lust at work you confess it every single time you look at pornography you confess it every single time you look at a coworker and you think hmm i wonder what it would be like to have sex with them you confess. And you're like, Josh, that's going to be like 50, 60 times a day to start. Yeah, probably. Probably. But again, a life on mission, it takes a team. You, you can't do this on your own. It takes a team of people, of support, real accountability. And you're like, guys, pray for me right now. Uh, I, I, I'm tempted to lust or I am lusting. Okay, praying for you, bro. Praying for you, bro. Love it. Cool. Guys, pray for me right now. I'm still, you know, it, that we get in this habit of confessing what's going on in our souls. Number two is this, pray. Josh, I tried praying, God didn't take it away. No, pray. Do you every single morning get up and say, Holy Spirit, work through me. Holy Spirit, empower me. Holy Spirit, let your fruit be evident in my life. Holy Spirit, give me self-control today that you pray. In Ephesians, Paul says, look, be filled with the Holy Spirit. That's actually a, a poor translation to our English. We don't talk the way he wrote it, but what he's actually saying is be being filled with the Holy Spirit. That constantly, all of a sudden, there's that desire. You pray. I want to look at porn. I'm going to pray. I want to fantasize about my coworker. I'm going to pray. It, it's hard to lust and pray at the same time. It's hard. But let's say you find a way to do it, Okay. It's even harder to like put some worship music on to worship God, pray, and lust at the same time. Again, they are at war with each other, the spirit against the flesh. And so let's give the spirit all the ammunition it needs to have victory in our lives. See, but the problem is, what do we desire? The question is, do you desire freedom from looking at pornography? We say, oh man, I don't want to look at this anymore, I hate this, but in reality, we, we more have a love-hate relationship with pornography than just a hate relationship with pornography. It's like, I love it in the moment, it's, it's awesome, oh, I hate it, I feel really bad about myself. But do you, do you want freedom? Do you want victory? Pray, walk in the Spirit every day, every day. Repent, or repent. Repent, this is not repentance. I look at pornography and I pray, God, please forgive me. Asking for forgiveness is not repentance. That's not what repentance is. The word in the Greek is metanoia. Metanoia means to change your mind. 
change your mind, to change the very way you think, to change the way I think about pornography. I used to enjoy it. I used to think, eh, not great, but eh, I don't know, I'm not sure, have a love-hate relationship. No, now this, I hate this very thing. I hate this very thing. This is sex trafficking. This is what, this is killing gray matter in my brain. This is causing an addiction. This is sex with my cell phone. I think differently about pornography. Repentance. See Christ. The next CPR. See Christ. I love this quote. This is also from John Piper. I know, this is so beautiful. I know no other way to overcome sin than to find a superior satisfaction in Jesus. I know no other way to overcome sin than to find a superior satisfaction in Jesus. Do you have a satisfaction in Jesus? Do you have a superior satisfaction in Jesus when you think of Jesus and the work of the cross and the grace that he has given us in what he's done in your life, that you've gone from death to life, does that bring satisfaction over sin in your life? Is Jesus more beautiful than porn to you? How do I gain a superior satisfaction? You don't just wake up and you have it. You have, it takes work. We choose the things that like bring us satisfaction, right? We, we, we choose these things. It takes mental work. It takes work through the Holy Spirit, but I can change and I can work on the things that bring me satisfaction. Do you have Jesus in your life? Are you in the Word? Are you praying? Josh, I'm not a reader. All right. They have the Bible app. It'll read it for you, right? Like, are you, in, do you, are you learning about who your Christ and who your Savior is? If you're not a Christian in the room, are you learning about who Jesus is? Who do we say he is? Who does the Bible say he is? Not society, not the internet. What does the Word of God teach us about who Jesus is? Do you have, like, is Sunday morning the only time you find yourself worshiping God during the worship time? Is that when you worship God? Well, Sunday morning is the time. No, are you worshiping him every day? Glorifying him. The way Jesus taught us to. Our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name. Do you see God as holy? And another way you do that is to remove the things that are not of Christ in your life we got to bring stuff in. we got to take stuff out. Well, what does that look like? What do you mean, Josh? I mean, like, man, you're struggling with looking at porn. You're struggling with boundaries around your sexual desires. And yet, we continually run to certain TV shows. HBO, Netflix, YouTube, right? We, we, we go back to these shows. You're like, whoa, don't, don't touch my Netflix, Josh. Don't touch my Netflix, But my question for you is, how badly do you want to find freedom? Right? We we run and we watch shows and we're like, it's entertainment, it's art, it's nudity throughout these TV shows, but that doesn't affect me, but yet I can't seem to break this addiction. Right? And this one, this one, (laughs) this one frustrates me the most. This one I hear all the time. It's, hey, you got to go see this movie. A lot of inappropriate stuff, a lot of nudity, but it's funny. It's humorous. It'll make you laugh. So it's, it's okay. We, we kind of give the, the, the green light to nudity as long as it's funny, right? This movie is hilarious. You got to go see it. There's a lot of nudity in it, but it's funny. And we got to be willing to fight that to go, you know what? No, What's more important to me is that Jesus is more beautiful than porn. What's more important to me is to actually find victory. But where do you want to find the victory in? You can't give some ground and not other. You can't go, okay, I'm going to put boundaries, but I'm, I'm still going to go look at this other stuff because it's, it's entertainment. P is this. Let me explain this, but it is pursue marriage. Pursue marriage. Paul says that, look, I'd rather you guys get married than burn with desire. Now hear me out, single people, hear me out. I did not say pursue a person. I did not say pursue a relationship. I said pursue marriage. What does that mean? That means that I'm going to spend my life working on becoming a person who should be getting married. 
I'm going to spend my life working and, and working on sanctification, working out my faith, working on walking step by step with the Holy Spirit, be being filled with the Holy Spirit. I'm going to work on that so that I'm a person who should even get married. Hear me out, singles. Do not think that marriage is the antidote to your porn problem. It is not. I know. I can speak from personal experience. Entering marriage in a porn, with a porn problem thinking, okay, it's all good now. I can have sex with my wife. This is going to go away. It is not the answer. So pursuing marriage looks like I'm going to be able to enter marriage without a porn problem. Married people in the room. Well, I'm already married, so this one doesn't count for me. No, 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 no. Pursue marriage. Pursue your spouse. Some of us need to literally have our brains rewired to connect back with our spouse and not with our cell phone. Pursue your spouse. Pursue selfless sex. Pursue selfless sex. I did not say pursue boring sex, okay? Selfless sex can be the most incredible, life-giving sex that you ever, ever experience. When, you're, when the husband and the wife are both trying to meet the needs of their partners, guess whose needs are being met? Everybody's. Pursue selfless sex. And finally, the last one is remove access. Remove access. You may have to go to a flip phone. Some of you, that's the worst news you've ever heard. Right? Like, remove the very thing. If, if you're addicted to cocaine and you actually literally have your cocaine dealer walking around with you all day in your pocket, take it out of your pocket. Now, there's, I will say this too, there's, there's a lot of options you have here. You can put amazing software on your phone. You can put software on your phone that the minute you even remotely go to anything that it thinks might be a pornographic website, like all your accountability partners get a text. Ding, 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 ding. Josh is looking at porn right now. <laughs> hey, Josh, what's going on? No, no, nothing, right? Like, that's, that's, it's called X3 Watch. On your notes, on the flip side of it, we have a lot of things that you can, that will help you a lot of options, a lot of tools that we want to give you to point you. And, and there's much more than this. This is what we put on for right now. Covenant eyes, all sorts of stuff you can do. But if that doesn't work for you, then get rid of your cell phone. Get rid of the things that are causing you to walk outside of your boundaries. Josh, I tried so hard and I just can't. Man, Hebrews 12 says this. Consider him who, en who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that you may not grow weary or faint-hearted. In your struggle against sin, you have not resisted to the point of shedding your own blood. Josh, I've tried so hard. Ah! Have you tried as hard as to shed your own blood against this thing? You have more to give. The stakes aren't high enough. But here's the good news. I want to close with this. Here's the best news. Jesus has not run out of grace. He has not run out of grace for you today. This is, again, not a beat you up session. This is a we can have victory and freedom today. Do you believe that Jesus has victory over pornography? Do you believe that Jesus is more beautiful than pornography? He's not run out of grace. You can look at porn 500 days in a row, and 500 days in a row, there's going to be new mercies and new grace for you every morning. Don't leave this room with shame. Don't leave this room with shame. Leave this room under the umbrella of grace and allow that very grace to allow you to see that Jesus is more beautiful than pornography. When we can understand the grace of Jesus, it brings us to a place of worship. It brings us to a place of Jesus. We desire Jesus over our sin. But first we have to see ourselves as sinners, truly broken, and then we have to see the full extent of Jesus' grace. Allow the Holy Spirit to work in your lives this morning. Allow the Holy Spirit to convict you, to encourage you, and to give you all the self-control you need so that Jesus can be more beautiful than pornography. Let's pray. Jesus, thank you. Thank you, God, that you have the victory, that you died, you rose again, 
You defeated sin and death so that I can walk in freedom from pornography. So that we can have healthy boundaries over our lives. And that when we live inside these boundaries, boundaries are not walls, they are gates to freedom. And that when we, put, when we put boundaries over our sexual desires, God, that we can live a full life, rid of shame, free of guilt, and experiencing the full pleasures and experience that you created for us. Lord, I pray for victory this morning for so many people in this room who just have been thinking they can't have the victory. Lord, let them desire you over their sin. We love you, Jesus. We worship you. In your name we pray. Amen.